Easter Day here from Farm Curious with another video about cheese making. Today, we're going to talk about what happens after you've made your cheese. You've created beautiful cheese out of a gallon of milk and you end up with more than three quarts of whey. Uh, this is actually two quarts. I have another quart still being stored from my last batch of cheese. Three quarts of whey is a lot to contend with, and we don't want to waste anything. So I want to talk to you about what things we can do with that whey. There are so many amazing uses, and I think I'm going to blow your mind. Before we get into what to do with whey, let's talk about some of the history of whey. So historically, when people produced cheese, they did it because they had animals. So what do you do? You take that whey and you feed it back to the animals. While your cheese ends up with most of the casein and the fat, your whey is going to end up with some soluble whey protein, which is a really great source of protein. You probably see it on a lot of labels for packaging. Um, and some trace minerals and mostly water. So the question is, how can I take advantage of all of that great protein? All the whey produced during cheese making was never a problem when people made cheese because they had their own animals. However, during the Industrial Revolution, when cheese making moved off the farm and moved to the outskirts of cities, people would be making cheese there, they'd pre be producing a ton of whey, and they would just dump that whey down the drain. Now we all know the drain doesn't just make things disappear, it has to go somewhere. And so whey ended up concentrated in local water systems, local rivers, local lakes, and the trouble with whey is that it's not just full of protein, it's also full of nitrogen. And what happens when we get a lot of nitrogen concentrated in our water system, we get algae bloom. And so algae would bloom on the surface of the local river or local lake. They're consuming all of that nitrogen, but they're also consuming oxygen. Then the algae use up the oxygen that's in the river, and without oxygen, fish and other creatures die. So you end up with this putrefied water full of dead fish that can't survive, no oxygen, it's smelly. People who need to drink that water or depend on that water, and not to mention ecosystems that depend upon that water, end up getting very sick. So the EPA came in and made it illegal to dump whey, which made the industries panic because for every 10 pounds of milk, you end up with nine pounds of whey. It's a lot to contend with some clever person came up with the idea of taking the water out of the whey and ending up with a concentrated whey product, which was full of protein, remember? And so they could then sell that protein to the burgeoning food industry for a profit. In fact, there are jokes in the cheese making industry that somewhere in the 1980s, whey was actually more valuable for its protein content than the actual cheese the cheese makers were making. And so you had these operations where it was really a whey production operation with cheese as a byproduct. They didn't care that much about the quality of cheese because what they were looking for was whey that they could sell for bodybuilding powders and things like that. And even now, whey, whey protein as a supplement is a really big deal for the food industry. I did a class for this really cool company called Dimatize, which is actually a distributor for whey. So they buy whey from the facilities that dry it and they distribute it to different operations that create food that need whey added to it for the pro to up the protein content. Super interesting industry. As a home cheese maker, you're not going to be drying your whey and selling it to the industry, but that doesn't mean you can't use it. Because whey is full of protein, there are lots of great reasons to use it. I'm going to list a few here.
things I showed you today, there's so much more you can do with your whey. If you recall, whey is full of nitrogen. So if you use it right away, before the nitrogen dissipates, you can water it down and use it as a fertilizer in your soil. Be sure to cut it one part whey with about six parts water or else you'll burn the roots of your plant. Too much of a good thing is too much of a good thing. So you can water it down and use it as a fertilizer. You can spray it directly on the leaves of plants that are getting powdery mildew. If you're a gardener, especially in, a, in the Bay Area, you get powdery mildew on your cucumbers and on your zucchinis and on your roses. Spray whey directly on the leaves and that will keep it from spreading. That's an old permaculture trick. You can feed the whey to your chickens for a protein boost. So if you have backyard chickens, you can give them the whey, especially while they're molting and they need extra protein and they'll gobble it right up. I just put it in a dog bowl and they'll, they'll drink it plain, but you can mix it with their food as well for kind of like a little oatmeal treat. Um, you could pour whey in your compost pile if you have a compost pile. All that nitrogen will get some real activity going there. final treat I want to tell you about that I'm not going to show you today is if you put your whey in a crock pot or a Dutch oven for 12 to 24 hours with the lid off, it will evaporate a little bit. It'll concentrate into something that's a little crunchy, um, a little sweet and kind of dark looking. And that's the beginning of cheeses like misost, yetost, or brunost. With those cheeses, they actually mix in a little heavy cream with it and make something that's rather caramelly that you can serve on toast. It's a little bit like if Vegemite and spray cheese had a strange little baby. It's a little bit crunchy, it's a little bit savory, but actually it's really delicious. So I, I recommend giving it a try. Only do that if you have a gallon of whey or more. Um, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this. Remember, uh, check out farmcurious.com. Please support our Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash farmcurious. Our Patreon members get first access to videos like this. They also get first invites to our live streaming virtual events. So that's a really great thing to be able to be invited to first because they sell out and fill up quickly. Um, thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and hopefully we'll see you in a class soon.